grew up in a Christian home. My mom taught Sunday school and my dad was an usher. We were grounded and rooted in the house of God. We were that as for me and my house type of family. As long as I can remember, I had a speech impediment. I was probably, um, I don't know, probably out in a preschool is when I, like I could like think, Wow, I, wow, I talk, wow, I talk so much, so much different from other people, and then I'd come home, and, and then I, just, I was like, wow, and <laughs> my parents do too, and I thought, gosh, gosh, what's wrong with me? How, how come I'm, <laughs> you know, talking like this and so like I think at that that um, um, time on is when I felt like okay I'm so totally totally different from everybody else and I think that's the time that it started like oh I don't like this that that and also I I, like I, like I didn't understand that, <laughs> that, that, um, that too it was hard because I thought, no, I don't, <laughs> like, I don't want to talk like this, I want to talk how they all Talk. When I started school, I had a learning disability, so I had to be placed in special ed classes in English and in math till I graduated high school. In school, the kids were never shy to let me know I had a problem. As I got older, the higher grades, the teasing got worse. I remember being terrified to read out loud in class or getting called on. You mentioned a few things that your mom would do every year. Yes. Um, oh my goodness. Every s um, 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 single um, year and, and till I was in um, high school, my mom would come down to the skull and tell me my teacher um, uh, to not call me, to not um, call me to 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 anything. And that too, and it's self, it made me feel like an outcast because they all did it except you know, for me. Everybody else read, but you were yeah. always kind of the odd man out. Yes, everyone would be like, "Well, how come she's not reading?" Or, <laughs> and I would, and, and like. And like too, I would just make up stuff that. Now you had mentioned you said you didn't bring your glasses. Yeah, that. And but did you wear glasses? No, <laughs> not at all, ever. I could see fine. So you were creative. Fine. Yes, I had. <laughs> yes, I had to get so like, how can I get out of this one? Or. My sophomore year, I met my husband. I did everything I could to hide my stutter. I just didn't talk much. In fact, I hid it from him for a year. I never forget the day he found out. So we're coming um, home, and I s and I don't know. I I guess I just I I forgot th that I was hiding it from him, and I s and I started uh, to talk, and I got stuck on a word, and and I just forgot, and and I'll I'll never forget this day he. He said, "Huh?" He said, "Um, 
Why are you talking like yeah, that? Yeah, he said, mm -hmm. he said, why are you um, talk, talking like that and this, this like, oh my goodness, overwhelming feeling came over me of smallness and I was just like, I was in my seat and I just shrunk <laughs> and I just cried, I just bawled like, great, he's not going to want me, you know, he's going to break up with me and, and I just cried, I have a speech impediment and and he said, you do? He said, gosh, I never knew. I said, I know. It's because I was hiding it from <laughs> from you. And um, I'll never forget the words he said. <sighs> he said, oh, Chrissy, I don't care about that. He said, because, because, because I love you, and, God, it was, it was just like, wow, and I kind of like said, you what, and he said, he said, come on, I don't, I don't care about that. He said, he said, come on, Chrissy. And so I'm just like crying still. I'm like, are you sure you still? He's like, of course I wanna be with you. Like, that's so dumb. <laughs> After high school, God gave me this passion to preach. I knew it was from God because I would never want to get up and talk in front of people. I hid from people my whole life and it just didn't make any sense to me. Why would people want to listen to me talk like this? Yet the desire to do it was something I would dream about. I prayed my whole life to be healed. The healing didn't happen, so I put my dream off. For a period of time, I was so frustrated with God. I even told him one day, how dare you put this passion in me and call me to speak in front of people when you know how I talk. Why would you want to make me look like a fool? When I was 26, Rudy and I were broken up for a year. During that time, I had finally surrendered my life to God completely. A year had passed, and my husband and I began dating again. We were faithful to God and His Word for eight months, then got married. We got pregnant with our oldest daughter. When she was almost two, she started talking more and more. I put her t to a bed. Um, and... She Um, um, her and I were just talking, and, sh and, and um, um, Caitlin started to talk, but got, but got, but got, but got stuck on a, um, word <laughs> um, and then kind of went like this and I said wait a minute I said I said what tell me again honey and <laughs> um, and then she, she, she told me again and couldn't get it out and so at so at so first, I was like, no, I'm not gonna believe that. That can't be happening, God. There's no way, no way. And so I just put her to bed, and and then I got up the next day, and I like um um. I had gone over to her and I was like, hi, Kaylin, how are you? And then, and then again, Kaylin started talking and it was worse. It was almost every, every other board. And I remember going to my room and 
I was mad, mad, mad. I said, not. I said, God, no, you cannot do this to my kids, not my babies. Like, I was like, like that, hey, it's all right if you, if you mess with me, but you can't mess with my babies. It was that, that type of a conversation. And then I had Kanan and, and, and the same thing. And then I, and then again, I thought, my son now, like, okay, I have two kids now. And then me, and that whole thing, I'll make a play, I cried again. I was, you know, just like, Lord, please let this not be true. God's grace helped me to get through it. The times of fear and the pain of knowing my kids has this problem was so overwhelming. I would cry out to God for comfort, and every time he showed up. I can't explain it, but I just knew he was there. After worship ended, the speaker, Lori Bryant, came up and began sharing her testimony. My ears piped up. Everything she was sharing was my story. The only thing different is she could speak but struggled with dyslexia and didn't write well. She wanted to write but wanted to be healed as well. As I told her my, my, my story and um, like I'm just bawling and crying and, <laughs> and then and then two, <laughs> Lori's crying and I'm crying. It was like, it's just like this, like this aha, like it's, oh, it's a moment, you know, be <laughs> you know, between us two. And it was like something that, like her and I, oh my goodness, had in common that was just so, so special to me that, I said, Lord, I think, <laughs> it's like, I have a match, but it was opposite of me, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was amazing. I had gone up to her and, and told her, and I, and she said, like, and she, she, she did, just like, um, 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 paused and said, and said, Chrissy, God is telling me to put your 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 sermons on paper. Do wait. You can in the meantime. Babies cry for the first time. It was that. And I told her, I said, huh? I said, oh wait, tell me again. And she said, put it all down on paper and, and preach with your hands and oh my gosh I like gasped inside I thought oh my gosh yes like I, yes <laughs> I said of course like I'm gonna preach with um, 
Apoi... Am... Am... My hands, I'm gonna write it all out on, on paper. I'm gonna... This is how I'm gonna get it out if I'm gonna write. And it was like... Like I just had a baby. It was like I just gave birth to this thing in me that God has just like put in me this passion to yeah I want to preach I want to go out you know I want to speak his word you know